each week we um, discern what scripture verse we're going to put on the, uh, uh, on, a, on the slide, it's on the screen. So what's the main verse? And it kind of hit me, um, this verse, out of all the long passion that we heard, this verse. Are you still sleeping in taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Get up, let us go. You know, this Lent, we've been focusing on uh, getting our soul in shape, getting our soul, making sure we're spiritually ready, we're strong spiritually. When we're not strong spiritually, then we're drowsy spiritually, right? We're, we're falling asleep, we're not attentive to those things that really matter, and we're maybe even busy about and doing all this stuff about things that don't really matter in the end or don't really matter before God. And so we get so fixated on, on money, on, on stock market, on uh, um, sports, March Madness, sports betting, um, the uh, politics, news, stuff like that. And, and then a lot of times Jesus gets like the last of our energy because we know he's merciful. He, and, but that's called the sin of presumption, to presume on his mercy, that we can just do what we want and he'll just forgive us because he's nice and merciful and loving. That's falling asleep spiritually, being drowsy. Are we attentive to those things that really matter, especially the things of God? Or are we focused on Him first? They start out that way during that week, Holy Week, laying down everything at His feet, right? A good image for us. Lay everything at the feet of Jesus. Put everything at His feet. Allow Him to be King in your life, of your heart, of your family. So who... Who did you uh, think of during that reading of the Passion? Which character or characters really struck you or, or, or a scene there? I'm going to talk about two characters briefly, the uh, two people. The first one, um, the woman who uh, anointed the head of Jesus with this perfumed oil that would have cost almost a year worth of salary. Sixty thousand, hundred thousand dollars of today's money, and the apostles were like, "Hey, you know, that can, we can use that. Why are you wasting that that money?" She gave everything to Jesus. She didn't count the cost. We tend to count the cost. We can be miserly at times with our with our talent, with our time, with our prayer, with everything, and we and we give the Lord a little bit, but that's all. The Lord going to give a little bit of my heart, not my whole heart. And we don't trust him. Jesus said, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. So our sister in Christ, we're still talking about this day. Will your family talk about you in the future? Others talk about you, that you gave everything to Jesus, that you, you trust in Jesus. That's what we want our legacy to be. We hear um, from, this is the Gospel of Mark. This is the year of Mark. We're in a three-year cycle. This year is a Gospel of Mark that we hear primarily during the, during the year. Mark, we believe, was a disciple of uh, Simon Peter. That's why we have uh, a lot of specific things about Peter, about his denying Jesus. Like things that only Peter would have known, um, he would have told to Mark, John Mark is also called. But if you notice that interesting point there, it said there was someone who, uh, the linen garment they're wearing, they, he, they were there when Jesus was arrested, and they grasped the linen garment, and he took off naked. That was most likely him, say Mark. And so then you have him later on, this image of uh, him uh, read for martyrdom, but also giving all, all to Jesus. It's interesting to note that uh, uh, at, at one point in the future too, remember St. Paul got mad at 
at Mark, at John Mark, because he, he abandoned him in his missionary journey, so there was um, a, a rift between them. They, they made up for that. They, they forgave, he forgave him. But even there, I think he had a tendency to run away, to run away a little bit. He still had to be purified. What is our tendency? Do we tend to run away from Jesus when things get tough? We're called to witness for him in a school, in our work, in our life, on our social media, or do we run away? Let's ask the Lord for the grace this week not to run away, or if we have, to come back to Jesus, come back to him. He's always merciful, yes. No matter what we've done, or now, no matter what we're struggling with, we just need to turn to him, ask for mercy, forgiveness, and he will. But we have to own up to it and live in the truth. Let's do that this week. Then we can truly celebrate Easter if we, instead of running away from Jesus, run toward him and give him everything like the woman with the perfume. Let's console his heart this week and this Easter season.